Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sands. Up next in the Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Smart Pet Talk. Today, we're joined by contributor, podcaster, and host Dan Gilman. And today, he is joined by Jordan Harvey, CEO and founder of Remote Control Technology, a design technology company powered by pioneers, engineering products, and experiences of the future. As a leading futurist in the tech industry with over 20 years of experience, Jordan has a proven track record of developing innovative solutions, shaping the future of technology. He's worked with some of the biggest names in the field. His unique combination of strategic thinking and design expertise has helped his clients become leaders in the development of innovative software and hardware solutions and products. He's also the founder of Novo Reality, a revolutionizing virtual reality robotics platform for virtual experiences. Beyond his entrepreneurial achievements, Jordan is dedicated to education. At the School of Visual Arts in New York, he mentors students in interactive applications, animated films, and visual effects. They join me today to chat all about his impact on the tech industry, the motivation behind remote control, and the future of the digital world. Welcoming now to the show are Dan Gilman and Jordan Harvey. Welcome, superstars. Hi, Zen. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jordan, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Let's dive right in. So to my understanding, you've had quite the career already, and I know you've been recognized for your numerous contributions to the tech industry, garnering many awards and honors, and being invited to speak at conferences such as NYC, X Design Week, Sotheby's, the Art of VR Conference, and the Future of Storytelling. But taking a step back, can you share a little bit about your background and what led you to pursue a career in technology and digital innovation? Yeah, I, that's a that's a deep question, but I'll try to be as brief as I can. Um, you know, I'm just very fascinated by creative ingenuity in general, and I think it comes from you know an upbringing with my father who raised us, kind of building houses, very hands on. And you know, I studied at School of Visual Arts in New York City as well, my alma mater, where I teach now, and. Uh, you know, that uh, naturally lent itself towards kind of a hands-on creative approach. And uh, I studied visual effects animation. And, um, you know, there's a lot of practicality to that type of creative design. And it lends itself towards uh, practical applications and technology as well. And, you know, in, in the, the emergence of the um, kind of games and applications era in the late 2000s, I got very interested in ways to apply create a vision and quality towards interactive experiences via mobile or web. So um, that was really the catalyst that kind of launched me into this world of technology and understanding how to develop high quality content on, uh, you know, usually technology platforms that require a lot of uh, constraint. Well, you've certainly found yourself in a great industry that is set for substantial growth. And according to market growth reports, the global technology market size was valued at $803 million this year alone, and it's expected to reach $3.2 billion by the year 2031. And this certainly doesn't come as a surprise with the exponential growth of technological innovation, such as artificial intelligence. I mean, VR and the rise of Web 3.0, especially in recent years, most people are shying away from it because they just quite frankly don't understand it. So while we've come so far, it really is just the beginning in many respects, but it seems like you've positioned yourself well for the future. Now, I know Dan has a few questions, so I'll hand it off to him. Yeah, Jordan, good to good to have you here. What was the initial vision behind founding Remote Control, and how has that vision evolved over the years? Uh, it's a great question. I love talking about this because it really shines the light on the true value of the company. And, uh, you know, if we really want to dig into what Remote Control offers the world, it's not necessarily technology innovation. It's access to people. You know, and the, the vision of remote control wasn't to create a groundbreaking technology innovation company or help all these great companies that we worked with make these innovations happen. It was to offer an opportunity for people like me who are creative technologists and innovators uh, do that with, uh, you know, the constraints of life, you know, children and family and, and uh, the timelines that usually are dictated a technology company or a studio or agency 
are really not conducive for having your own personal life. So the vision of remote control really came out of that. It was this idea that we might be able to create an environment that we can be high performance innovators and do really amazing innovative work, but still have a great work life balance. You know, so our our equity is really in the people, you know, and that's that was the idea that remote control kind of uh, birthed out of. Fascinating. And it's clear that where some fall short of the necessary technical skills uh, and others fall short of the artistry, you really mastered fusing both creativity and cutting edge tech. So it should come as no surprise that you've partnered with companies like Meta, and Peloton, and even the U.S. Air Force. Now, can you describe the core mission of remote of remote control and how it influences your company's strategies and projects? Yeah, our core mission is really to illustrate the future of uh, creative applications in technology. That's why we want to work with Air Force. That's why we want to work Pelotons. That's why we want to work with Meta, because those are um, organizations that represent the forefront of technology and innovation. They really put you know, massive global efforts into making uh, transformational technology, and we want to be there with them. You know, and I think that if you can live and breathe on that cutting edge of technology, you learn so much. Not just about who you are as a person or who you are as an organization. You also learn a lot about the world and the people within it. You know, and I think that's very fascinating. And you you mentioned Meta, so you've collaborated with Meta, which was formerly Facebook, on several projects. And can you elaborate? on your partnership with Meta and the impact it has on remote control? Oh, they are, um, you know, a lot of agencies or studios have um, a large list of clients and typically they have some that like, you know, they're the breadwinners or they're the, you know, the, the showcase client. Meta is quite simply my favorite client that I've worked with. Not just because they're meta and they have this grand um, brand that really um, represents like innovation, but because like working with them on a day to day basis is so inspiring because there's so many amazing people that they're able to bring together for these projects. And um, thankfully, they've, you know, entrusted remote control to help them bring uh, visual and quality innovations to their pipeline. And I really enjoy working with them a lot because of the opportunity to be on the forefront of technology. You know, we've been working with Meta before they rebranded as Meta. We went through that transition with them. And, you know, the vision that they have is, quite frankly, working with a lot of technology companies, one of the most altruistic visions of technology. And I appreciate that as an optimist with technology. And uh, they really are um, not just uh, a lifeblood as a client for us, but they offer offer you know our our team so much inspiration to working with them on that type of innovation incredible tell me you love your clients without telling me you love your clients it's yeah and, it's a dream <laughs> yeah and, and and these vr technologies are only going to keep growing and expanding since they really could be applied in so many different areas right education entertainment healthcare tourism architecture i mean the list goes on and on in fact in 2023 there were just under 66 million people using vr in the us which was a 15% increase um since 2022 and looking specifically at vr headsets according to idc analysts virtual reality headsets are on the rise with steadily growing sales by over 32% a year so it's clear that there has been a shift in interest for this technology. And while the terms are not synonymous, it's hard to talk about VR without also talking about the metaverse, right? And VR and VR headsets play a central role in transporting users into the metaverse to engage more effectively with their virtual environment and other users in the space. Now, Jordan, I'd love to get your take on this since according to a study by Tidio, over 77% of people are concerned about the metaverse's harmful impact on society. But in your opinion, with the growth of these technologies, how do you envision the future of the metaverse affecting everyday life? That's a great question. Um, and, you know, I have to, you know, be upfront. Like my my viewpoint is an optimist in this type of technology. I, I believe that 
Um, technology in general can have its impacts on humanity, but I think that the uh, quote unquote metaverse applications, whether they be VR, AR, mixed reality, and, and from my viewpoint, metaverse goes even deeper to like heads up dash displays in cars, anywhere that you're seeing digital content integrating into your physical reality ma ma matches my definition of the metaverse. And I, I feel like um, those technologies offer accessibility globally around the world at a scale and a potential that we've never seen before. And uh, you have to take the considerations of impact as well, but the opportunity that that presents globally to the world is quite um, significant. You know, going through, uh, you know, the past five years that the world has together, uh, recognizing um, virtual presence and the way that we can still connect around the world uh, virtually or asynchronously is, is, is quite a, a, a statement for the potential for what metaverse applications, VR applications, AR applications can really bring to the world. And I don't mean entertainment and I don't mean games. I mean the way that we interact with the world itself, driving cars, shopping at grocery stores, doing your day-to-day -day life may become easier and not even just the leisure activities or the productivity activities, education itself. You know, one of the first applications uh, for VR that I had a pleasure of working with was with Creative Labs at Google. And we were doing some early experiments with the expeditions programs on teaching kids how fireworks work using VR. And we were able to dive into the physics of it and teach young kids in elementary school what physics and fireworks meant through this ability to dive inside and show a visual example. And that really taps into what I think the potential of these metaverse applications are. It's not so much leisure, it's not so much games or some productivity, it's like the opportunity for growth and expansion of like knowledge and, and the human just uh, potential. Well said, very well said. Yeah. Can you, uh, I know uh, time is of the essence, but can you discuss any upcoming projects or initiatives Remote Control is working on that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, I, I you know, there's, I can't say too much, but I can say that we're deeply invested in AI. Uh, we are excited about those same opportunities that I just discussed about the metaverse and VR AR with AI as well. And it, it doesn't come without the recognition of, of its impacts, but it comes with the recognition of the opportunity. So we believe at RC that um, AI is going to be a major transformation for the world, as most people do. But we see our specific niche as being able to create um, a, a face and a, and a personality for AI that other people don't have the capability to do right now. I think a lot of the AI interactions right now are very text-based, um, or voice based, you talk to it, you type to it. Um, we kind of envision that interaction with AI much more natural. Let's talk people like us face to face with AI and kind of give it a, a fun personality that's enjoyable to communicate with. Right on. Now, Jordan, you founded Remote Control back in 2019, which I'm sure feels like a lifetime ago with all that you and your team have accomplished. But since then, looking ahead, what are your long term goals for Remote Control and how do you plan to achieve them? Yeah, that's a great question too. Um, AI has really created a, a strong pivot in the technology world. And uh, our initiative, we, I was actually just chatting with my team last week about this, about uh, expanding and strategizing globally. Like how do we do what we've done for Meta and Peloton across companies globally, especially in this transition from um, what I would call like pre-AI to post-AI and helping them uh, not just cross that transition from a technology perspective, but cross it from a quality perspective. Maintain quality of user experience as you integrate these new technologies and maintaining what, what I call like the sanctity of the human experience, right? We don't want to forget that all of these things are for people. So remote control is really um, focused for probably the foreseeable future on trying to help companies uh, make better products for people. Wow. Well, we are officially out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We covered so much and I learned so much from you and your perspective is unique and refreshing. And I love your enthusiasm because we need thought leaders like you in the industry to 
really continue the trailblazing because it's really truly about just understanding the technology, applying it, proper use cases, and not being afraid of, of change, right? And I think that's what a lot of people are stuck in web one and web two and are afraid to even explore what web three means, but it's going to come a point where they have no choice. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the time to talk about my story and thank you so much for, for hosting. Absolutely. That was Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Smart Pet Talk. And that was the incredible Jordan Harvey, founder of Remote Control Technology. Definitely be sure to check them out and learn more online at rc.tech and capabilities.rc.tech. And of course, check them out on the gram at Jordan underscore James underscore Harvey. And of course, to see more of Dan, head to discoveryourpotentialshow.com. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this.